see that. Yeah, but see, Joaquim has already put in, you know, over 60% of his chips. He's obviously committed. So it's not like Glenn can hit the flop here and then take the pot away from Geiger with a bet. But he's going to outflop him, and he's going to win this pot. There's no way he's going to throw the hand away now. Well, Joaquin Geiger's moved all in. He does have the inside straight draw. A two will put him in a very good position. An ace is also a very good card for him. But as it stands at the moment, Bjorn Eric Glenn is set to call this table again. Nervous times for Joaquin. Well, he knows he's drawn slim. He needs an ace or a deuce, and that's pretty much it. He doesn't want to lose. He doesn't want to leave this table, and he definitely doesn't want to leave this table to a fellow Scandinavian. Well, the Queen will not do. A smile, a glint of resignation in the face of Geigert. Well, the Swede is all out of luck. It's a fifth place finish for Joachim Geigert and 138,200 euros. There was a time that was almost top prize in the European Poker Tour. That's what you get for fifth now. He leaves, and Bjorn Eric Glenn is Bjorn again. And he says, thank you for the poker. David Dineshkar, David Gregory, Phil Ivey and that man Glenn. One of them is our first EPT champion. Come back after the break. We're settling this one tonight. Welcome back to Barcelona and the first round of the EPT Series 3. Only four players remain. Phil Ivey, Bjorn Eric Glenn, David Gregory and David Dineshkar. The trophy is going to England, Norway or the United States of America. And David Dineshkar moves all in. He's the shortest stack here in the final table in Barcelona. Let me look first. Was the best hand I've seen. Like, it's not a very good. It's 115 more. These cards are hot. This this, this card is hot. Six. six. One hundred forty-five thousand. <laughs> I call. Well, he has to call. He's got pocket sixes going heads up, and Dineshkar's hand was was kind of forced there. Well, exactly. But I mean, why are you talking? Why are you telling your opponent that this is the best hand I've seen in a while, but it's not very good? Well, he obviously wanted him to lay it down. Gregory Six is as good as it stands. Oh, better sweet. Out comes the Queen for Dineshkar, and Gregory's now got trip sixes. This man knows. I see the Queen at the door card. <laughs> Wishful thinking from David Dineshkar, and we know for a fact now that he's going out in fourth. That means he picks up 161,300 euros. Not bad for a couple of days' work. But he was here to win it, and that's not what he's going to do. David Dineshkar goes out in fourth place after having a very good tournament and, and providing a lot of entertainment for everyone at home and around this arena. And it's David Gregory yet again that does the damage. He's not here to make up numbers, and that number is down to three. Now, David, I know you respect Phil Ivey hugely, but you were just saying he's been getting a lot of luck, hasn't he? I mean, Phil Ivey is probably the best player in the world, but... When you play good and the cards come your way, I mean, it's hard to stop. I don't know. I mean, you know, we're from the States. I've played with him before. He's a great player, but, like, when everybody's hitting pairs and he's hitting sets, I mean, how can you beat him? It's difficult. Mm. Have you enjoyed being on the final table, though? Yeah, I, I enjoyed it, but I, I'm kind of disappointed. Uh, right before the final table, I had, like, half a million in chips, and I lost uh, a pot to Ivy and to somebody else. So I came to the final table, kind of short stack. But uh, I was hoping to, you know, catch some cards, and I kind of went card dead, so what can you do? I guess fourth is probably the best I could do with the cards I was getting. Well, here's where we stand with the last three players. David Gregory has doubled his chip stack since coming to this final table. Bjorn Eric Glenn sitting on over one and a half million, but it's Phil Ivey, the favourite before we started, leading the way. I mean, this is his first ever EPT event. There was a lot of hype following him, and he's lived up to it. Well, of course. I mean, you know, Phil is not considered one of the best players in the world because he plays like a git. He's an exceptional poker talent. He's been beating the biggest games in the world for years and years now. He was actually sneaking into the uh, casinos in Atlantic City before he was old enough to uh, do it. He had a fake ID. Allegedly. We've all been there. Well, he's uh, quite open about it, actually. Um, 
I forget the name he used to play under, but he was well known in that by that name in Atlantic City for several years. I think it was Greg Reamer. That's what it said in his fake ID. Well, I don't think so, but uh, <laughs> it would have been an interesting coincidence if it had been. Jerome, that was what he went by, Jerome. Jerome. He, he was known in the poker world as Jerome for several years. If you're going to have a fake name, Jerome's the one you want to have. Well, all three players involved in this pot pre-flop. Let's take a look. look it's all about the cards here, but uh, Glenn's not going to like his hands. Well, he's going to love it now. He said his flush draw straight out, and there's nothing that can beat him here. Well, everyone came into this pot with a weak hand. I mean, but, you know, Glenn came in with a raise, at least. He was trying to steal the blinds. I'm not really sure why Phil and David called with the hands they called with. We are literally at this stage quite simply looking at Gregory hitting the street flush. That's the only way anyone's getting out of jail here. And Glenn comes out betting 90,000 into the pot. And is it possible for Ivy or Gregory to like their hands? Well, well, that's, they're both gone. There you go. That answers the question for me. Did he play that too strongly? No, I don't think he played it too strongly at all because, I mean, he's been raising lots of pots and he's been making the continuation bets. If you all of a sudden check now, it's going to stand out as, a, as unusual. Well, it's unusual for him to make a final table. Let's find out more about him. I'm kind of half-time poker player. Uh, the other half of the time, I, I'm a father. So I have my two, two sons, uh, Marcus and Tobias. I discovered Holden online about five years ago, five, six years ago. Started playing live uh, in uh, about 2004. Played four ATs last year. I finished 19th in, in Copenhagen. I, I'm aware of the guy on my right, uh, Phil Ivey. Probably is the best poker player in the world. And in addition, he has the chip lead. So that would be a task, but we have plenty of time to play. Bjorn Eric Glenn reminds Greg Raymer of Dustin Hoffman's character in Rain Man. Well, only when he has that really happy grin. Uh, not, not when he's sitting there with a neutral face, but uh, he wants to work on the smiling a little bit if he uh, wants to be a leading man candidate for the Hollywood movies. Well, it's a nice family pot here. Ivy calls. Glenn makes up the big blind. Gregory checks. Let's have a look how the flop comes down. Everyone checks to Phil Ivey, who's on the button. Yeah, checks little, as well. A little something for everyone except for Phil Ivey, and he did not take a stab at it. Well, two power now for Glenn. He's going to like this a lot, although there will be danger signs with the hearts that are on board. This will have to be a big enough bet to get rid of Phil Ivey. He wants to win this pot right here, right now. Well, Phil's not going to be too excited about a 10 high flush draw. And there's three higher hearts out there that could beat him, and he knows that he's beat already. He knows he's not ahead at this at this point in time. Interesting to see Gregory rubbing the eyes and you know taking his glasses off. I wear glasses myself. It's a sign of tiredness. You take the glasses off, you put the palm of your hand into your eyes. You don't want to be losing your concentration at this stage. David Gregory certainly just doing exactly what I would do after working three days solid with with you, Greg. Well, he's not working with me. He's working with Phil Ivy, who is. <laughs> was voted the most feared player in the poker world at the uh, poker awards show we had in the states a little while back and this is one reason he uh, is you know making this big push it's going to be a very tough spot for glenn even with aces up i mean he's not going to fold this hand i don't think but i'm sure he's not too thrilled about making this call either what he won't want to see is a heart if he doesn't see a heart he'll put himself in a very good situation even if he doesn't see a heart on the river he's probably going to check call at best well, it's not a heart. However, it is a card that could maybe just annoy Glenn because it puts up straight possibilities. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether Phil can fire at this. I mean, Phil knows he's beat. There's zero doubt. The only question is, can he get Glenn to lay the hand down? And another scare card has come. And, and that's, for, for not being a heart, that's about the worst card in the deck that could have come for Bjorn Eric Glenn. It's interesting because Bjorn looks away there, almost as if he knows he's resigned that he's part of this hand, and he wants to see a small enough bet here to justify a call because there's already half a million in the pot. That's 300,000 more. Is that a big enough bet? Obviously well, not. It's not. He's called it straight out. He's committed to this pot. He's going to be very happy because he's taken over a million chips in one hand. He turns over absolutely nothing, Phil Ivey. He's been caught with his pants down, and Bjorn Eric Glenn takes over a million chips. I like those calls a lot. I mean, he knew he was either beat or Ivy was bluffing, so he just called. Maximizes his win, minimizes his loss.
Well, if Phil Ivey's left his phone on around that table, Greg Raymer, he might be getting a ticking off from his mum. He didn't play that hand particularly well. Well, it's not that he didn't play it well. He just made a misread. He thought he could bluff the hand. He was semi-bluffing on the turn with the flush draw, even though it wasn't a big flush draw. And then on the river, when Bjorn Eric Glenn checks again and is looking weak, he tries another attempt. It's not necessarily a mistake, it's a misread, which it's a mistake, but it's a forgivable one. You're making excuses for him because he's Phil Ivey. Oh, if that had been Bjorn somebody else, you calls. would have said he, no. he had enough warnings to get out of that hand. He, had enough, he was called enough times to know he wasn't going up against nothing, and he had nothing. He should have got out of the hand early. <laughs> I'm not letting you, come on. No, no, Just says he's American. There's no, there's, I'm not having none of this. Let, let's get back to the poker. <laughs> well, we've been sitting with three players for long enough now, but with the big blinds at 30,000, small blinds at 15,000, the anties three. You know, sooner or later, the pack of cards is going to come tumbling down along with someone's chip stack. Ivy's back on the button. He's got 10 six suited three hand and he's going to put in an extra 50,000. Well, even though these blinds are big, with three players, we have lots of chips in play here. Yeah. So no one is in any hurry to make something happen. I mean, they can wait for cards if they have to. They can make moves when they think it's the right time, not because of any pressure from the blinds. Well, Bjorn Eric Glenn on the small blind has had a massive hand. We're three handed and he's got the hooks, two jacks in the hole. An amazingly strong hand. I mean, it's a strong hand at a full table of nine or ten players, but three-handed, you're going to assume you have the best hand 99% of the time or more. I mean, you're basically never going to assume that you're beat. That's why he's put the re-raise in. He knows that right now he's the monarch of the Glen, and will Phil Ivey get involved? Phil has the button, he has the position, and he has lots of chips, but he knows he's way, way behind, and the problem is he's not going to have any clue when a flop is good enough. If it comes 10 high, he might think it's good enough, but of course we know it won't be. But Phil knows that he can make a mistake like that, so he's factoring all this in as he makes this decision. I suspect he'll be laying it down. Well, he's giving it a good think, and he is going to make the call. So he's not giving, that means he's not giving Bjorn credit for a real hand here. He's just putting him on a move. I suppose in Phil Ivey's defense, he's seen Bjorn Eric Glenn make re-raises with relatively weak hands. Well, the flop comes out. Let's talk you through that. Really nothing uh, for Ivy to get excited about whatsoever. But scare cards for Glenn, the king and the queen. He knows he's beat if Ivy's got one of those in his hand. And he has raised initially, Ivy, and then called the re-raise. So he's every right to put him in that. Well, he's going to find out. Well, it was a good continuation bet there by Bjorn, and uh, you know, that was a spot where Phil could have really proven to us that he's the greatest player in the world. If he could have seen through that continuation bet, and if he could have made a big all-in push there, we know that Bjorn cannot call with pocket jacks on that flop. He can't. But Ivy, of course, is maybe, you know, he can very easily be putting Glenn on the East King, East Queen. Well, even if you are, you know, the best, one of the best players in the world, that doesn't mean you know what the other guy has every time. Yeah. If nothing else, this is proof that psychic powers do not exist in this world. <laughs> or we would have a poker player who never makes a mistake of that sort. My, my flatmate is a mind reader, and he's done the Edinburgh Festival, got very good reviews in the Scotsman and stuff. Rubbish poker player. Rubbish poker player. I don't believe in psychic powers at all, so uh, I guess your flatmate's just a con artist. Hopefully he's not too offended by that statement. It's a, he's a con artist on the 15th of every month when I'm going to be getting my rent off him. Right, King 5-7 is the flop. And that's the bottom pair for Gregory. Nothing for Ivy. Well, the only question here is whether Gregory is going to make a stand with his bottom pair, which is actually a pretty good hand, three-handed. I mean, you don't flop a pair that often, and so even bottom pair is usually not a hand you're just going to check fold. But uh, the question here is probably how many bullets can Ivy fire? If he can fire again on the turn in the river, I'm going to have a hard time seeing Gregory calling both of those bets. Well, this is exactly it, isn't it? Ivy's boss in this hand with absolutely nothing, but they've both checked the turn. We're going to take it to one more card. It comes out a pair of kings on board. Great card for Gregory. He knows that that didn't change anything. He's either still ahead or still behind. Why did Ivy check the turn in the river? Obviously, when he bet on the flop, he was bluffing. Why?